All right, 97.7 Outlaw Radio FM listeners, we are live in full effect right here, right now, with one-third of my favorite hip-hop group of all time, man. We actually have E-Rock of the Fifth Ward Boys, Rap-A-Lot Records' finest, right here, live on the line. How are you doing this evening? What's going on, homie? I'm doing pretty good, man. I hope everything is all well out there in Texas, man. I heard you guys just opened back up, so I know you are most definitely living large out there in Texas. Oh, man, I'm I'm just taking it slow, man. I ain't just trying to rush into, rush into things, but work, you know what I'm saying? I'm working on my new album right now, so that's all I've been doing, you know what I'm saying? And I got to say, man, a brand new E-Rock album, man. I, I got to say, that's exactly what hip-hop needs, man. Just hearing that gets my blood boiling, man. I, I'm excited for that. I appreciate it, man. How, how, how you doing, man? How you doing? Where you at? Uh, right, right now, it's a little, little bit, little rocky still. Uh, we're pretty much at the beginning right now in my province of Ontario. We're locked down. Um, we've been locked down for the past two months. Um, so uh, they're slowly trying to reopen things, but we don't actually start opening up until almost July. So we're uh, pretty much getting screwed by COVID really hard right now. Yeah, yeah, I can dig it. That's crazy, man. It's crazy times right now, man. We said about the peace and love and blessings, man. Everybody but- that's listening. But I want to take you back to the beginning there, E-Rock, back way before COVID was even a thing, man. But I got to ask you, like, what actually made you decide to get into the music industry initially? Because I know your career is so is, is so rich and legendary, man. I know we're going to get into more of that, but I want to know what made you get into the music industry initially. Well, actually, I didn't even know I was going to get into the music industry. I was just a fan of hip-hop, you know what I'm saying? As a kid, growing up in the 80s and, and the... Uh, you know, the world DMCs when hip hop was just starting, you know, I got a chance to uh, witness that. And I was just a fan of music, period. You know what I'm saying? Uh, every Saturday morning, I had to get up and clean up. Moms would get the record player and, and put our records on, and I had to clean up every Saturday listening to music. You know what I'm saying? The OJs, the Whispers, Maze, you know, you know, never know what she was doing. But yeah, I was a fan of hip hop, and I just started rapping in like the fifth grade, you know, just having fun with it. And I kept doing it and doing it, so eventually, when I got to high school, I met my homeboy Double O Seven in the twelfth grade, and we was, you know, we was on the same basketball team and all that. But we found out each other can rap, so we was just rapping, doing it for fun. And that same year, uh, my homeboy Dewey, who we signed to at the time, who was with Rap a Lot, he was opening up a new record store. So my old boy 007 was going to the record store and it was getting built and in progress and found out this guy was looking for some artists. So we just happened to know how to rap. And, you know, we went, you know, did our thing for him and we ended up becoming a fifth war boy with E-Rock, 007, and, and Low Life, who now is New Life. So, yeah, man, I, I never planned on being in it. It was just a blessing that fell in my hand. And I got to say as well, man, like, you, in my personal opinion, you guys were the NWA of the South, man. You guys really brought those controversial lyrics, man. You you talked about stuff that a lot of people were afraid to talk about, man. And I always considered the Fifth Ward Boys, in my personal opinion, the NWA of the South. Well, I would have to give that trophy to the Ghetto Boys, <laughs> you feel me? Because they was before us, you know what I'm saying? They they the ones that kicked it off with rap a lot, so... I would have to get that trophy to the ghetto boys, the, the country version of ghetto boys, you know? And I got to ask you as well, during your tenure there actually at rap Records, did you ever have the opportunity to actually, like, do any work with the actual ghetto boys, like, in the studio? Because I do know that you personally did work with Scarface, but were you actually in any studio sessions with Bushwick, Scarface, and Willie D at the same time? Uh, not at the same time, you know, because everybody was moving around busy. You know, there was a lot going on. But, yeah, I actually got to be in the studio with all of them. You know, with the, actually, the, you know, most of the artists that was on rap a lot, I got a chance to do a lot of work with, with most of them. So that was a beautiful thing. And also, just going back to the beginning of rap a lot, if you don't mind me asking, like, how, how did you actually land that record deal with Jay Prince? And, of course, what was it like just working under Jay Prince's label, rap a lot Records? Man, it was beautiful, man. I learned a lot. I learned a lot about the music game. I learned a lot about just being a man, period, just living life. I I just soaked up a lot of game. I was around a lot of strong-minded people, so I was a sponge just learning and soaking up game, you know, from everybody. So 
from that, it built me into the guy that I am today. So now I'm a, I'm a producer, engineer. I can still write, so I'm working on my own album right now, producing and writing and recording, mixing and mastering. So I was able to soak some of that game up and, and soak some life game up as well. And also, on November 20, uh, 28th, 1995, the Fifth Ward Boys actually released uh, Rated G. And I, I, I know that's probably one of your most one of your most like most famous records and i know you probably get asked this a lot but i was wondering if you could tell us the story behind that album and of course how does it feel to know that that album is still making waves today in 2021 man you most definitely right rated g that album was uh yeah that album made a, a big impact you know it was uh you know before we, could, we even put the uh, album together we was like we wrote, because we had just did, the first album was Ghetto Dope, and then we released the EP uh, called Gangsta Funk, and then Rated G came after that. So in the process of making Rated G, we was like, we want this album to be like a movie. When people listen to it, we want to paint pictures that they can see, like some Picasso type shit. You know, like, we wanted, we wanted vivid pictures, like, so when you listen to it, you get a movie experience. So... We titled the album Rated G. Yeah, that was beautiful. And I gotta say as well, you had some phenomenal uh, collaborations actually on that record. I believe as well you had Flesh and Bone, UGK, Daddy Low, and a bunch of a bunch of other amazing individuals as well. Like that album was stacked. Yeah, yeah, that was one of our best albums, man. I had fun working on that one too, man. That was a beautiful thing. And also as well, the one thing that I have to ask, man, is because one of my favorite songs by you guys actually came out in the album uh, following Rated G in 1997, Unusual Suspects. You guys actually dropped a song called Live Your Life featuring Tasha. And the reason why I'm asking this, man, because that song is probably one of the most inspirational songs that you could really just sit back and vibe to. I always wondered, like, what's the story behind that song? And of course, like, what inspired those lyrics? Yeah, live your life. That's one of our uh, man. Well, that's one of my most favorite songs we ever recorded. And I'm pretty sure I can speak for the other guys as well. But yeah, we get a lot of love from that song, man. Because you know, even though you know we came up in the gangster area and all that, we still wanted to spit positive and give us some good positive content on the album. You know what I'm saying? So, live your life was one of those songs that you know we we chopped up a lot of game, and it was inspiration at the same time you know what i'm saying and i gotta ask as well how did you guys actually get connected with that uh female artist tasha because i gotta say she 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 actually that that song she most definitely made her mark on that song like your guys's chemistry with her was absolutely phenomenal oh she dope man shout out to tasha man if, he, if anyone i know who tasha was she was the same uh she was the same singer that song thuggish ruggish bone for uh bone thugs and harmony it's the thuggish, ruggish bone. Yeah, that was Tasha. So we got connected with her because the homie Mike Dean was doing some work in L.A. And we was working at this studio called Enterprise in L.A. So uh, Mike Dean was already working with her on a couple of joints. So we was looking for a female artist to sing on that, on that particular song. And he was like, hey. Let's give Tasha a shot, and she came to the studio, we, we kicked it, met her, and she just nailed it, like, she just nailed it. And I have to and ask you, well, man, was, I, was that the only time you guys actually had the opportunity to work with Tasha, or was she actually featured in, in other f uh, future projects as well? No, that was the only song that she appeared on. Well, I got to say, she most definitely did some phenomenal work with you guys, man. And I just got to say, thank you for making such an insp inspirational song, man. That definitely helped a lot of people. Yeah, I still love that song to this day, man. Shout out to Tasha. Shout out to Bone Thugs and Harmony as well. Shout out to Mike Dean, too. And also, in the year 1999, yourself, alongside Low Life and Slim Thug, was featured on Rapsta's uh, Superstar of, of the Ghetto single. I was wondering, how did yourself... Yeah, how did you guys get connected with uh, Rapsta? And of course, uh, what was it like being in the studio with uh, Sl with Slim Thug as well? Uh, what was the name of the song again? Uh, sorry, I was uh, superstar of, uh, of the, sorry superstar of the ghetto. Superstar of the ghetto. Uh, I'm not too familiar with that joint. I 
need to listen to it. I, I'm I'm lost in the sauce. <laughs> <laughs> I, I most definitely, well, definitely go out. back in the I go back in the crates to find some of these questions, man. So sometimes I sit back and go, damn, man, I hope they remember. <laughs> um, ghetto superstar. Yeah, yeah, I, I don't. I don't remember that when I'm sorry. Oh man, it's all good. It's understandable. It's 1999, right? So I'm, I know most definitely you've been a busy guy all the way since then and even before. So no worries on that one. It's completely understandable. Yeah, it's all good. But also in 2004, you were actually featured on Daz Dillinger's album uh, "I Got Love in These Streets" on the song uh, Fe- uh, on the song "Feel It." I was wondering how did yourself and Daz Dillinger get connected, and of course, what was it like working with a West Coast hip hop legend like him? Oh man, like oh man, uh, yeah, I did some work with Daz. Shout out to Daz Dillinger, man. Shout out to the whole Dog Pound, man. The whole the whole camp, Snoop and all them. Shout out to the whole camp. You know, uh, yeah, uh, yeah. Daz came to Houston, and him and Corrupt was out here before. You know, one time they came to rap a lot, and it was like it was like a whole gang of um, outlaws did some work with them. Big Sight did some work with him. Uh, Spice One came through. Did some work with him. He fought it, be legit, that whole camp, you know. Uh, man, it was, I was a fan of all them guys, man, to be honest, because, you know, Spike especially, I was, I was jamming him in high school and he fought it in them, you know, so when I got a chance to meet him, it was all love, man. But, yeah, Daz, Daz is, man, he, that guy is talented, man. He's a dope producer and a dope writer, man. Shout out to Daz. And I got to say, you guys had phenomenal chemistry on that song as well, man. Just absolute chemistry. The energy, man. It'd be like once you get in the studio, man, and the vibes come, it's all about the vibe. And, and if you got a dope beat in front of you, you just got to eat on that. And, you know, I'm in the studio with Daz Dillinger. I know he's going he to snap. You know what I'm saying? He come from death row, kicking it with Pac. You know, he, kicking, he come from a strong camp, so... Hey, man, once we get in the ring, I got to be able to stand up and hold my own. So the whole vibe was fun, man. It was just fun of making a record, period. You know what I'm saying? The vibe was the vibe was there. The energy was good. It was good, positive energy, and we were able to feed off each other, man. So, yeah, I appreciate that moment, man. Stamp in time. And also, in 2008, you actually released your solo-titled album, titled Ghetto Famous, and I was wondering if you could tell our listeners a bit more about that project release, and of course, is it available today to be purchased or listened to uh, on, on streaming media services? Oh, yeah, yeah, that app, well, actually, that was a mixtape, it really wasn't an app, it was just a mixtape, you know, that I put out, I put out several mixtapes, I just threw them out there, you know, just having fun with it, with the mixtapes, when the mixtape era was really popping, you remember that era? Oh man, I, I I miss that era in my personal opinion, man. I wish I wish mixtapes will come back. You man, I wish that shit would come back too, man. That shit was dope as fuck, man. You know, and I had all the dope ass mixtapes, so yeah, man. Everybody was putting their mixtapes out at that time, so yeah, there was a couple of mixtapes I put out. They're available on our uh, on platforms right now, so if you want to stream those, you can go catch them. I also remember with the mixtape days back in the day, man. I remember when DJ Green Lantern used to do his thing, man. I don't know if he's still making making tapes or whatnot, man. Man, but I used to remember when I heard about a release date on one of his projects. I used to hover around that PC, admit, waiting for midnight for that to drop so I can download it, man. Mixtapes were the best. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Green Lantern. It was a whole lot of DJ Lantern, DJ Clue. You know, it was a whole lot of them. They was just releasing mixtapes, you know, from the East Coast, and then you had the ones from the West Coast. Then you had the DJ drummer come through with the South shit, you know. And it was, man, that moment was beautiful, man. Beautiful moment. And I also saw on your Facebook as well that you actually produce your own beats. And I was wondering, if there if there is any artist that's listening to this, whether it's live or pre-recorded, I was wondering, man, like, how can our, how can these artists go about purchasing your content and uh, so they can actually have your beats on their next project. Uh, hit me in the DM. Let's let's talk about it. I'm willing to work with anybody. I still work with other producers too. I love working with other producers. So if there's any producers listening, hey, hit me in the DM. Send me some shit. If it's dope, I'll buy it from you. We'll work. You know, make history together. Yeah. And I have to ask.
ask, man, what, what actually made you decide to get into uh, beat making? Because i got to say, I listened to what your most recent beat that you put up a few days ago, and it is absolutely phenomenal, man. Like, that shit makes me want to actually try to be a rapper here for a minute, but I know I can't rap or shit, so I'm just going to stick to being a DJ. <laughs> oh, man, you can do it if you put your mind to it, you can do it. Yeah, man, I, I, I started producing shit, man, in like 93... You know, like just being around, watching Mike Dean, watching uh, the homeboy Mr. Lee who did uh, Blue Laces for Nancy Hustle, uh, the homeboy Beto, my homeboy Damo, who was uh, who's Scarface DJ, uh, DJ, and my homeboy Blind Rob. Blind Rob is phenomenal, man. You got to get Blind Rob on the show, too. Blind Rob, for those that don't know Blind Rob, he's from the R Squad with Devin the Dude and uh, the homie Jug Mug. So... He just produced uh, Devin's new album. He produced the whole album. So, yeah, Lion Rob is killing the scene. So I learned a lot from them guys, man, back in the day, man. So I've just been working at it, you know, sticking to it, you know, developing my craft, working on my craft all the time, just spending a lot of time in the studio perfecting and perfecting and perfecting my craft because I don't know how to play piano. I don't know how to play nothing, but I can... I can put out what I hear in my head, you know what I'm saying? I can make it happen. I can manifest it. And also, April 10th, so just last month, you actually performed at Adult Swim Pool Party Part 2. I was wondering if you could tell our listeners a bit more about that show. And of course, how does it feel that you get back on stage after this whole pandemic actually took the world by storm? <laughs> oh, man. Hey, performing is like riding a bike, man. You know, you never forget, man. You know, you know, I, I just get better, like, fine wine. I get better with time. You feel me? I feel like I'm at my bench right now, lyrically and, and as far as producing. Like, I'm a beast in the studio right now. Like, I'm killing shit. So I'm looking forward to finishing my album. Make sure y'all check out my homeboy New Life. He got a new album out right now, too. So make sure y'all check him out. Check out my homeboy 007. Check out what he's doing with the game, too. So, yeah. My new album coming, it's on the way, it's called The Arrival. Called The Arrival. And I have to ask as well, it's based on your new album, man. Like, I, know, I know you can't let too, too many cats out of the bag, of course, but I have to ask you, man, what can our listeners actually expect from this up-and-coming brand-new E-Rock release? Oh, man, expect, uh, expect to hear some good music, expect to hear a couple of stories, expect to hear songs that's going to make you think. Expect to hear songs that's going to have you bouncing and jumping in the club. Expect to hear something for the females. And expect to hear some OG gangster shit as well. You know what I'm saying? Got to keep it gangster. And I'm going to say, I'm, I'm, I'm excited myself, man. You know, I still have all the old uh, uh, Fifth Ward Boy records, man. So I'm going to be honest with you. It's going to be dope to actually hear some brand new E-Rock. Especially after how the world has been the past, like, almost two years, man. It's, it's, it's always refreshing when one of your favorite artists actually slides out a new release, man. It takes you away from all the bullshit for a good hour. Right, man, right. Music is, music is good, depending on what music you're listening to, you know? And also, aside from your brand new record, man, because obviously 2021, we're still early on with, within this year. I was wondering, other than your new record, what is next for you? Is there anything I happen to miss? Anything else you still want to talk about or promote? We'll stop you here live on the Canadian Airwaves. Uh, I'm working with a lot of artists right now, so especially uh, my son, he's doing some music right now, and he doing, he got his own video company, so that's a good plug. And, uh, yeah, man, just working with some new and upcoming artists I got on the side with me, some new producers, working with my homeboy Bruce Bang at our mix Houston studio, so we, we staying busy, man, we staying busy. And also, E-Rock, this is the time in the interview, quickly, that I give a chance for the individual that does slide into the radio station airwaves, just a chance to give shout-outs to whomever they want to give shout-outs to, but most of all, man, your social media handles, that way our listeners can follow you and stay updated on everything E-Rock, if they're not already doing so. Word up, word up. So follow me on Instagram, E-Rock Fifth Wall Boys, uh, Facebook, E-Rock Fifth Wall Boys. Twitter, E-Rock, Fifth War Boys, Fifth War Boy, E-Rock. It's on everything. So, yeah, hit me up. Hit me in the DM if you want to work on some music. Hit me up if you're a producer and you got some dope beats. Hit me up. Let's work. 
let's chop up game. Let's let's talk about it. And I got to say, first and foremost, there, E Rock, right, right, right where we're part ways, I just want to say personally, uh, thank you so much, man, for creating years of amazing music, man, that not only inspired individuals like myself, but people all over the world, man. I just want to give you your flowers while you're here and just say thank you for making just timeless music that's going to live on hundreds upon hundreds of years from now. Thank you for that, man. And hopefully down the line, we can make this happen again sometime soon. But for now, I just want to say thank you for giving us some of your time this evening and, of course, making dope records throughout all these years. Man, I appreciate you for having me, man. I appreciate you having us. So we're going to have to do another one in a couple months. Well, not a couple months, maybe in a couple weeks, maybe a month depending on when I finish this album. So I'm going into mixing and mastering right now, so we'll definitely have to do another one. Most yeah, definitely. Whenever you're up, ready, just let me know. Stay in tune with me. I got a lot of shit going on. I got the new clothing line coming, too. Make sure you stay tuned with that, man. You know, that's going to be big. I can't say the name of it right now, but that's going to be big. Hey, most definitely. You can't go wrong with some E-Rock of the Fifth Ward Boys swag. You can't go wrong with that. It's going to be dope no matter no matter what the name is. Yes, sir. Yes, sir, man. I appreciate you, too, you know them? Hey, man. So I pre- the good work, man. You interview a lot of artists, man. Keep up the good work and the positive energy, man. Hey, I most definitely will, man. I ain't going to stop until the wheels fall off, man. So thank you so much, E-Rock. And whenever you're ready to do a second one, you just let me know, and we'll get you back on ASAP. That's a bet, man. Hit me up any time, bro. Most definitely. Same for you, E-Rock. Thank you so much, man, and have yourself a wonderful night out there in Texas. You, too, man. Peace and love. Peace and love.